Welcome to the Real Lost Boss podcast. Hello, welcome to episode 30. Yes, 30. Feels like a bit of a milestone, that one, uh, of the Real Lost Boss podcast. How to handle holidays while losing weight. Or, if you are across the pond... Uh, in the US of A, I have no idea if I've got any watchers, stroke, um, listeners uh, to the podcast from the States. But anyway, vacation, how to handle vacation while on a weight loss journey. If you do uh, watch or listen to these podcasts from anywhere other than the UK, let me know in the comments. It'd be interesting to see. Um why am I talking about this now? Well, in less than 48 hours' time, I shall be on a plane uh, winging my way to a seven-day all-inclusive holiday. So I thought it's a good time to have a chat to you guys about how to handle those all-important holidays. And holidays are important. Well, they certainly are to me. I absolutely love going on holiday. You know, I'm a big believer in, you know, we need breaks from everyday life and that is what a holiday is. And, you know, just because you're losing weight, it doesn't mean you don't need a break from everyday life. In fact, if you're concentrating on a weight loss journey at the moment, it's probably more important than ever to have a break from everyday life. Holidays were something that I did struggle with at the beginning of my weight loss journey. Uh, I started my weight loss journey in February 2014 and I had my first holiday um, booked for the end of June 2014. So February, March, April, May, yeah, about five months after I started my weight loss journey. And I didn't have it booked when I started my weight loss journey. And you know what? I nearly didn't go on this holiday. It, it, it got into my head, you know, going on holiday, overindulgence, eating foods you don't normally eat. It it kind of, yeah, it did. It got into my head and and I had to think long and hard about whether to even book the holiday or not. But in the end, you know, I came to the conclusion that um, weight loss is meant to enhance your life. And if while losing weight, you are going to sacrifice things that you look forward to or things that you enjoy, then it's not enhancing your life or it's not enhancing your life the way it should be enhancing your life. So I booked my first holiday. One of my very, very good friends lives uh, in the Alps in France. And that's what the holiday was. It was going over to see him for three or four nights. And I'd not seen him for a couple of years. He'd moved there in 2012. I didn't have the confidence to go over there before I started my weight loss journey because A, you know, very underconfident about fitting on a plane and B, um, my mobility issues were to the point where I would really have struggled sort of moving around. And although I was only five months into my weight loss journey and yes, I'd lost some weight, I'm I don't actually say how much I've lost because I've talked about this before in previous podcasts. I didn't weigh myself for about the first uh, nine, ten months of my journey. But um, I was still definitely over 30 stone. But that didn't matter to me. I don't know why. You know, I, I was still morbidly obese. I still needed an extender belt on the plane. But I had a newfound confidence. Uh, plus, I'd gone from being not far off being bed bound, to be honest with you, when I started my weight loss journey, really struggling some days to get out of bed, uh, to being able to move quite freely for, you know, 20, 30 minutes at a time without needing uh, uh, a break or a rest. So yeah, I had a newfound confidence and I wanted to, you know, uh, being 37 stone, it really suppressed my life. I always felt like I was existing, not living. Maybe I didn't quite feel like that when I was 37 stone. But as I lost weight and I started to move more and experience different things, it's made me realise, and certainly now, 10 years on, it's made me realise massively uh, how my obesity suppressed my life. And yeah, I definitely did just exist and not live. You know, like I say, in less than 48 hours time, uh, I'm going on um, a week's all-inclusive, flying out to Mexico. And, you know, 10 years ago, 
I would never have dreamed of doing this holiday. So yeah, it really did hold me back. But like I say, five months into my journey, and I probably booked this holiday, the first holiday that I ever went on on my weight loss journey, maybe only six weeks probably before we went. And like I say, I really undenarred about it, but I was like, nope, you're going to go. Once I booked the holiday, I was then fighting in my mindset about how to handle the holiday. You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to carry on, you know, uh, concentrating on your calories? Are you going to carry on, you know, being... not? I wasn't overly restrictive, but I was very conscious about certain things I was eating. I just, you know, again, this was racing through my head going up to the holiday. And you know what? In the end, uh, another friend of mine who was a mutual friend of my very good friend that lives in France, he booked on the holiday as well. And he was like, I'll come with you. I, 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 you know, I want to see John as well. So I'm like, okay, right, so we'll go together. And that kind of helped me because in the end, I was just like, right, do you know what? You're going on holiday. You're going to see one of your best mates that you've not seen for a couple of years. Another very good mate's coming with you. It's four days. You've absolutely nailed it for the last five months. Just go and enjoy yourself. Don't go crazy. There's no need to to be stupidly overindulgent, but go and enjoy yourself, have some nice food, have a few beers with your mates, and when you get back from holiday, get back to doing what you do. And that is exactly what I did. And I can't lie, was there some guilt while I was away? There was. There was some massive, um, massive guilt while I was away. And um, it didn't stop me doing anything, but it did kind of detract a little bit from the holiday. And that's the same with, with anything, if you feel guilty about what you're doing. I always say this, takeaways have never tasted as good to me as they do now, because I have zero guilt in eating them, uh, because I make sure that they fit in with my calorie allowance in terms of health. The majority of my diet is nice and healthy, so if I have the odd meal here and there that's unhealthy, that's quite calorific, it doesn't bother, bother me whatsoever. Whereas, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, I'd eat takeaways. I'd eat way too many takeaways. And because of that, there was this overriding guilt. And that overriding guilt of eating a takeaway, yes, you enjoyed it while you're eating it, but it actually took the pleasure away from it. Um, and that was kind of the same with that first holiday. And because I wasn't weighing myself, um, and maybe this was a good thing, if I'm being honest with you, uh, because I wasn't weighing myself, you know, um, was... Um, yeah, it, it, I didn't see, I don't like using negative terminology, but the, the way a lot of people put it, I didn't see the damage that was being done from the holiday. And at the time, you know, five months into my weight loss journey, I didn't have a healthy relationship yet with food. I didn't have a healthy relationship yet with weight loss. Um, so I think maybe the fact I didn't weigh myself probably did help because obviously we can gain uh, quite a lot of weight quite quickly on a holiday. I'm going to go into that a bit further into the podcast. Okay. Um, did I go on another holiday? Yes, I did. I was like, did I go on another holiday? Yes, I did. Um, um, before I waved myself is what I was trying to uh, say there. Uh, when I came back from that holiday, uh, a very good friend of mine, Matt, uh, we were in the pub one night and we were just chatting and he was like, do you fancy, you know, going away? And I was like, yeah, what are you thinking? He said, Benadol. I love Benadol. So I was like, okay. He said, should we go for your birthday? So it was my birthday, beginning of September. 2nd of September is my birthday. Uh, I said, all right. So again, we booked it. And again, going into that holiday, <sighs> the guilt of the holiday kind of took over a little bit going into it. What am I going to do? This is more of a, uh, a lads, lads, lads holiday. To be fair, the holiday to France, like I say, we went to the Alps. Uh, it's a ski resort. It's the middle of summer. Most things were shut down. Um, this was the holiday in France, by the way. Um, so it was just a case of going around a few local pubs, having a few beers, uh, a few local restaurants, because that's kind of all that was open. So it wasn't an all out, you know, boozy holiday, lads holiday kind of thing. Whereas I knew Benidorm, that's what it was going to end up being. If anyone's ever been to Benidorm, it's Honestly, one of my favourite places in the world. It gets such a bad rap. And most people that give Benidorm a bad rap is because they've never been before, right? You go to Benidorm, trust me, if you've never been, go. Your opinion will change massively. Um, 
but it is, you know, it's your buckets of beers and it's uh, your cheap pints through the day and going out drinking and going out at night time and watching your tribute acts and this, that and the other. Uh, that's kind of like the new town of Benidorm. But uh, I also go quite a bit into the old town, which is a lot more Spanish and tapas and all this, that and the other. It's lovely. Um, but again, I knew that was going to be, and we actually ended up going for nine nights. So um, just because of the price of flights kind of thing we ended up going for nine nights so again it's a more extended holiday because the first holiday in june was four nights so again i'm struggling a little bit with the psychology of it and you know what you're gonna do for nine days you can have you know i was going through the motions of should i do a day on and a day off so a day drinking a day not drinking a day drinking and a day not drinking a day of looking at your calories and making sure you just eat healthy on the days not drinking and then having a bit of freedom the next day and again in the end i just I treated it the same way as I treated the holiday to France. I went, I enjoyed myself. Um, I, I tried not to go back to being 37 stone nil, being greedy for the sake of being greedy. If I was hungry, I ate. I didn't just order for the sake of eating. Uh, didn't, you know, drink stupid amounts of beer just for the sake of drinking stupid amounts of beer. I had a few nights, obviously, where it was a bit more of a session than other nights. And I just enjoyed myself and I and I and I came back and when I came back I got straight back into doing what I normally do. When I first weighed myself in October 2014, this was the first time or the first thing that really started to fix my relationship with weight loss in general, food, going on holiday and stuff like that. Because again, I have spoke about this before, but on my weight loss journey, I couldn't really weigh myself. I didn't have scales myself that would weigh me. I was 37 stone when I started. I got my start weight from uh, stepping on some cow scales at a farm. I was too embarrassed really to go back and uh, and ask to use them again. Uh, I went to the doctor's a couple of months into my weight loss journey. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks actually into my weight loss journey. Uh, and the scales in the doctors went up to 200 kilograms. And I weighed 234 kilos when I started. And I didn't want to go anywhere near the scales in the doctors till I knew I was under 200 kilos. And it's like, well, how do you know? I, I didn't, if I'm being honest with you, I didn't. But I went for a little checkup end of October 2014. It was actually to discuss um, um, my antidepressants. I'd not been on them at that point uh, for the whole of 2014 I, uh, or um, I might be lying there. I think I came off them at the end of 2014, uh, end of January 2014, just before I started my weight loss journey. So I've not been on them for about nine to 10 months. So I just went in for a catch up with my GP and just had a chat. And she said to me, so what are you weighing at the moment? I said, I have no idea. And she went, what do you mean? You don't know. I said, I don't know. She went, why have you not weighed yourself? I said, no, there's no scales that weigh me. Uh, you know, when I come in and, uh, you know, couple, two or three weeks into my weight loss journey, it must've been two, three weeks and you prescribed me with all the stuff. So the last time I got on the scales and you couldn't get an, uh, an official weight, you put me down as 200 kilos because uh, you couldn't get an official weight because I was too heavy. And she was like, well, come on, then, let's get on. I was like, no, I don't want to. And I, and I really, did. I, I fought it a little bit. I said, because if I've not got under 200, I'm going to be like, it's going to really upset me. Anyway, I jumped on the scales uh, and I'd lost 100 pounds. I think I was like 185 or something like that from memory. Uh, maybe maybe a bit more, maybe 195 if, if I do the maths. Yeah, it might have been 195 uh, kilos, something like that. So I was under the 200 mark and I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, I couldn't. And um, again, I've talked about this before. I went back to my car after being in the doctors and I sat in the driver's seat and I started to cry. I did, I started to cry. There were tears of joy. And, and that's when I started to really analyse things. I'm like, do you know what? In the last like eight, nine months or however long it was, uh, I've been on two holidays. I've had takeaways. I've had this, I've had that. Obviously not all the time, but I've had uh, at least one takeaway a week. I've had two holidays that I've really enjoyed and I did really enjoy them. Like I say, I didn't, you know, sacrifice anything on those holidays. Uh, I just enjoyed myself, but tried not to be too, you know, extreme extravagant uh, and, and be gluttonous on purpose uh I'd, I'd celebrated a couple of friends birthdays and had nights outs and all this that and the other and i'd lost a hundred pounds and that was that fixed a lot of things in my head but one thing it did fix was around holidays and it basically you know uh said to me you can go and enjoy life neil 
You've had two holidays. You didn't restrict anything. Now, don't get me wrong. If I'd not had those two holidays or I restricted things on those holidays, you know, I'd not had those that one or maybe two takeaways a week. I'd not enjoyed my friend's birthdays and stuff like that. I might have lost 120 pounds. I have no idea. But I, 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 it, it's... I always say this, there's no perfect weight loss journey. And if you try to have a perfect weight loss journey, you're actually going to have a very imperfect weight loss journey. And although I say there's no perfect weight loss journey, that first nine, 10 months of my weight loss journey for me was actually pretty damn near perfect because I found a great balance. I found a really good balance. Like I say, enjoyed two holidays, enjoyed some nights out, enjoyed a takeaway. Alongside that, the majority of the time, I was conscious of what I was eating, conscious of my calories, conscious of increasing my everyday movement, going to the gym a bit. Um, but yeah, in terms of holidays, you've just enjoyed two fantastic holidays, Neil, and still lost £100. Amazing. So I was absolutely buzzing off that. Um, my next holiday was about nine months later, uh, and it was the first one with uh, my wife, Rachel. And again, I took her to Benidorm. She'd never been, uh, watched the TV show, had the same thoughts about it as a lot of people did. She was like, really? I said, honestly, I love it. I want to take you to one of my favourite places. And we went. And, and we went for it. Uh, we ended up going for 11 nights, actually, because we booked again to go for my birthday. Uh, and we booked Tuesday to Tuesday. And I had I just never realised that the Monday was a bank holiday. So we booked Tuesday to Tuesday. Uh, we booked an apartment, booked our flights, and then when I realised like the week before that the Monday was the was August bank holiday, uh, I, I said uh, I messaged Rachel, said, "Can you get the Friday off work?" She went, "Why?" I said, "Let's go bend on Friday. Come on, let's go for it. Let's let's go. Let's go all bank holiday weekend and let's have let's have a really good holiday out there." I was just like, "All right." I said, "I'll see if I can get a flight," and I did. So we went for eleven nights, and again, same thing. Um, you know. Stayed on my journey all the way up to the holiday and um, went to Benidorm with Rach. Had a really good time. Had a few boozy days. Had a few days with a lot less booze. Uh, went out for some lovely meals. Um, and as soon as I got back from holiday, cracked on. And if I look at what I class as my initial weight loss phase, which was February 2014 to November 2017... When I uh, finished my initial weight loss phase, I was 240 pounds down. I've lost 240 pounds. Um, and in that time, three years, nine months, I did the holiday to France, the holiday to Benidorm with my friend, the holiday to Benidorm with uh, Rachel. We then went to Mexico for our first time in February 2016. I'm trying to think, do we have another holiday in 2016? I can't, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but in May 2017, we went to Mexico again for two weeks. And in October 2017, we went to Tenerife for a friend's birthday. Oh, we did have another holiday in 2016. We went with our friends uh, to Benidorm again. We did Benidorm again in September. Um uh, two of our very good friends um, and their wedding present, we paid for uh, their flights to come to Benidorm. So they had to pay for their hotel, but we bought the flights for them to come to Benidorm with us uh, as a wedding present. So, uh, yeah, I did have one. So what's that? Uh, three trips to Benidorm, one to Tenerife, two all-inclusives in Mexico and a holiday to France in the space of three years, nine months. And I still lost £240. What that tells me is you can go, you can fully enjoy holidays while you're on a weight loss journey and you will still successfully lose weight. Why? Because the honest truth is a week all inclusive here or there, a weekend away here or there, and this Christmas, celebrating Christmas every year, makes up such a small fraction of the year nobody has a weight issue because they enjoy one or two holidays a year. No one has a weight issue because you enjoy Christmas. It doesn't work like that. We have a weight issue because of what we do the rest of the time. You know, if you work it out, let's say you go on two, 
one week holidays a year. So you might have one in May, one in September, something like that. Might be all inclusive. That's 14 days, right? Let's say Christmas is about a week. That's 21 days. And then let's say any other little celebrations, maybe anniversaries or, you know, parents' birthdays, kids' birthdays, uh, friends' birthdays, maybe a little weekend away once or twice a year. Let's say 36 days of the year you don't care about weight loss. Again, I'm not saying that you go and be this gluttonous little piggy on purpose, but you just kind of shuffle the priority pack. And the priority is to have a relax, to have a chill, spend some quality time with a loved one or family or friends. Um, and you just, for a few days or a week, you just shuffle that priority pack and shuffle you know, weight loss backwards a little bit and making memories and, and enjoying yourself forwards a little bit. If you do that 36 days of the year, that is less than 10% of the year. Enjoying yourself for less than 10% of the year is not the reason why you have a weight issue. It's what you are doing the other 90% of the year. That is going to be the issue. So how do you handle your holidays? And I can only talk from my own experience, you might listen to other people of, uh, of how they do it, but this is how I've done it, and this is how I do do it, and I, I'm going to be doing it next, well, in two days when I go away, I'll do it next year if I go on holiday, I'll do it in 10 years time, it's something I've done from the start of my weight loss journey, and that is, I create a cutoff and a restart point, and this is the same at Christmas, this is the same if I've got a weekend away or anything like that. I create a cutoff and a restart point. When I get to that cutoff point, that's when I shuffle the weight loss priority pack and it goes backwards a little bit. When I get to that restart point, I restart, right? So, for example, we're going away on Friday. That is my cutoff date. So all the way up to Thursday this week, I'm recording this Wednesday afternoon. So all the way up to Thursday this week, I'll be tracking calories, banking calories I would, as I would normally do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, being conscious of what I'm eating, making sure I'm eating you know, relatively healthy. Again, in, as part of the weight loss journey, looking at my steps, getting some exercise in as well, uh, drinking my water. If you're watching this, you'll see I've just picked up a glass of water. Let me have a quick sip. Everything stays in place. When I get to the airport on Friday morning, that's my cut off. And I don't mean it's no holds barred, but I'm just going to enjoy myself for a week. Am I going to be consuming more calories than I would do normally? Yes. And I, am I going to be consuming more unhealthy foods than I would do normally? Yes. Am I going to be drinking more alcohol than I would do normally. Uh, definitely, yes. Right? And then I've got a restart point. And my restart point is a week on Monday because we get back uh, a week on Saturday, which I think is like the 11th or 12th of... of uh, I think it's the 11th of May. So I get back on Saturday, travelling back sort of Friday night into Saturday. I'm going to enjoy the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. And then Monday, new weight loss week, bang, I'll be straight back at it. No compromises. And that's the same from that very first holiday when I went to uh, see my friend in France. I think we went on the Thursday, we flew back on the Monday, and my cut-off date was the Thursday, my restart date was the Tuesday after we got back, and I remember I stuck to it. I stuck to it religiously up to the Wednesday night when we were going. I think even my friend messaged me and said, uh, we're going to see John tomorrow, do you fancy a few pints tonight? And this, I said, no, 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 I've got, I've, I've got work to do. And I did actually have some work to do. I said, I've got work to do, I'm going to get my head down, but we'll definitely have a couple of pints in the airport tomorrow morning. It was like, sounds good to me. And I did, and I stuck to it. And that's what I'll be doing this week. And then that restart date, same as I did at Christmas, you know, a few months ago. My cutoff date actually was a little bit earlier this year. It was the 20th of December. My restart date was the 1st of January because that was the first Monday of January. And on the 1st of January, I was backtracking my calories. We went, I think, did we go to the gym? I can't remember. But anyway, I was backtracking my calories, back being more conscious about my food choices. So restart date, cutoff date. In between that, re, uh, sorry, cutoff date and restart date, I just enjoy myself. But... 
I get straight back to it. And that is what is so important. If you go on a week's all-inclusive holiday, and that week's all-inclusive holiday then turns into five, six, seven weeks because you don't get back to doing what you do, then that's when going on holiday can become an issue. Why wouldn't you get back to doing what you do? And my honest opinion of this is, is the method you're using to lose weight. Because again, you know, I, don't get me wrong, I do get clients that have struggled, you know, in January, February to get back to things. And there's a few different reasons for it. But the main one for me is... The method you're using is unsustainable. Now, I only coach healthy, sustainable weight loss. So why a couple, and it was only a couple of my clients struggled to get back at it in January, February. I think one of the main reasons is seasonal affective disorder. You might laugh at that, but it's it's a true thing, you know. I think after Christmas is quite a depressing time. It really is. You take all your tree down, you take all your lights down. January, February is dark. It's miserable. Everyone's a bit skint. No one's doing every, anything. And a lot of people look for comfort in food in that period. For me, January, February, March is always a great time for weight loss. I'm very much like, I'm on it. But I understand that that's not the, the case for some people. Um, But... Yeah, I have no reason not to get back at it because, again, the first week of January, straight after Christmas, on the Saturday night, I enjoyed a lovely kebab <laughs> because that's the way I coach weight loss. Weight loss for me, the majority of your diet should be healthy and nutritious, of course, but 20, maybe even up to 30% of your diet can be, 20% is a good number, but maybe up to 30%, it doesn't make too much of a difference, it can be whatever you want it to be. So a lot of people struggle with getting back to their diet after a period of maybe a bit of overindulgence, a bit more food freedom. Because if you've not eaten carbs for six months and then suddenly you go on holiday and you enjoy carbs, you start to realise how amazing carbs are in your life. Not just the fact that they taste amazing, how different they make you feel. And, I, and when I say carbs, I'm not talking chocolate and crisps. I'm talking, you know, if you go on holiday to Spain and you have something like a paella and rice and stuff like that, carbs energizes us. It does. It gives us energy. Um, so I think you start to realize, I was very similar to this at the start of my weight loss journey. I actually thought I was no carbon, right? Um, yeah, trust me, my education has increased massively over the years, which is why I'm no weight loss coach. But, uh, and I cringe, some of the people I talk to about weight loss, um, and to be fair to them, maybe they didn't know themselves or they were just being extremely polite. But yeah, the first eight or nine months of my weight loss journey, 10 months up to Christmas, I was like, yeah, I've just cut carbs out or I'm just not eating many carbs or whatever. You know, I didn't realise rice and oats were carbs. So I was eating rice and oats most days. Uh, I thought they were grains. I didn't realise they formed them. And a lot of people don't understand what, you know, carbohydrates is a blanket term. Pulses, beans, you know, whole grains. Um, yes, sugar, of course. Fruits, veggies, that's carbohydrates. So I'm there going, I'm not eating carbs. In my head, carbs was pasta, potatoes, pastry, bread. And I wasn't eating much of that, but I was eating oats. I was eating rice. Because, again, I thought there were grains. I think I was eating quinoa, uh, maybe some couscous. Uh, I was eating, uh, yeah, beans, pulses. I was eating fruits, veggies. So I was eating good carbs, healthy carbs, you know, complex fibrous carbohydrates. But I was eating carbohydrates. Anyway, but I think it, I was doing that. But when it came to uh, Christmas and I ended up having a roast dinner and I had a bit of Yorkshire pudding and I had a bit of roast potatoes, I was like... I don't want to live my life without these. And then from from uh, Christmas 2014, I introduced all carbs back into my diet. Bit of bread, potatoes, pasta, but ate it within my calories and I still cracked on losing weight. So it was all good. Uh, why? Because calories are what controls our weight loss, weight gain. So yeah, if you have a period of overindulgence and you're panicking about going on holiday because you struggle to get back at it, look at the method you're using. If I'm using any unsustainable, crazy fad diet to lose weight, and, and Slimming World Weight Watchers comes under that, ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, um, you know, shakes, weight loss shakes, Cambridge plan. If you're using any of those methods and then you give yourself a week of food freedom, it will really stamp in your mindset how restrictive these weight loss methods are and that's why a lot of people then struggle to get back 
to, to doing uh, what they need to do. You know, if I have a week of eating carbohydrates and then I've got to get back to the ketogenic diet, I'm really going to struggle to get back to it. With my weight loss plan, all I'm asking you to do is, is rein your calories in again when you get back. You don't need to necessarily rein in all the foods you love. You don't even need to necessarily rein in the calories right down to your ideal calorie deficit. Have a phased return to work, as it were. You know, if you're normally in a 3,500 calorie deficit first week after your holiday, do a 1,750 calorie deficit. Second week after holiday, do 2,500 calorie deficit. And then third week after holiday, go straight, go in then into your 3,500 calorie deficit. You know, ease yourself back in. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, so, yeah, holidays. I'm not going to tell you, and I get asked all the time, and especially this time of year, we've just, it's the 1st of May today, 2024, um, and I've noticed this, again, another reason why I've done this podcast today is, um, um, yeah, some people, uh, oh, uh, sorry, I've noticed that I've had quite a few questions, how do you handle holidays, and, and maybe it's because I've been talking about my holiday and stuff like that. So that's all I do. And I can't give you any more than that. I create a cutoff, create a restart. In between those two times uh, or dates, I enjoy myself. I try not to go back to being 37 stone, Neil. I've done it once in um, September, um, not September, May 2017. We went to Mexico. We ended up going for two weeks. It was cheaper to go for two weeks than it was for 10 days. Again... (laughs) From my own experience, when I go all inclusive, I can get a bit greedy and I can run away with calories a little bit. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we're just going for a week this time. I like to, you know, keep myself in check. Um, we went, last time I we went to Mexico was 2022. We went for uh, 10 or 11 nights then. That was all right. Actually. I think we did 11 nights. That was all right. I gained 12 pounds. I'm going to talk about weight gain on holidays soon uh, in this podcast Give me a minute. Um, um, But in May 2017, I have no idea why I went back to being 37 stone, Neil. I was gluttonous. And looking back, and even Rachel was like, what are you doing? I was like, no, I'm hungry. She's like, how can you be hungry? We had breakfast. And I was literally, you know, we were all inclusive. The all inclusive, the food was amazing. Don't get me wrong. But I was doing breakfast, three or four plates, doing lunch. Even if Rachel wasn't hungry, I was ordering room service for lunch and this, that and the other. Going out at night time, eating when I didn't need food. Uh, it was a very boozy two weeks as well. So consuming a lot of alcohol. I came back after two weeks all inclusive uh, in Mexico in May 2017, 30 pounds heavier. All right. So this might be a good time to talk about weight gain from holiday. Uh, I'll go back into the Mexico story shortly. Will you gain weight on holiday? Yes. Is all the weight you gain body fat? No. Will some of it be body fat? Yes. Will the majority of it be water retention? Yes. When you, Especially if you go into a hot country. If you go to a hot country, this is going to be me next week. It is ridiculously hot. It says it's 36 degrees at the moment over in Mexico. So it's 36 degrees, stupidly hot dehydration. Even if I'm drinking lots and lots of water, dehydration. What else am I going to be doing that causes dehydration in the body? Drinking alcohol. Am I going to be eating more unhealthier foods? Yes. Am I going to be consuming foods that have more salt in? Yes. All these things are going to cause water retention in the body, right? And that water retention, especially when you get back from holiday and start drinking water and getting hydrated, your body will retain lots of excess water. Until your body becomes confident that the body's rehydrated, it's going to get a constant supply of hydration and water, and then it will flush out all that excess water retention. Okay? But until it does that, that water retention is going to reflect on the scales. Are you going to gain some body fat on holiday? You should do. I hope you do. And I mean that sincerely. Like I say, there's no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey. And there's nothing wrong with having short periods of overindulgence where you gain a bit of body fat. I gained some body fat at Christmas. I will gain some body fat next week. 
Am I bothered about it? Absolutely not. Why? Because when I get back, my restart date, I'll get back to doing what I do. And within two to two, maybe three weeks of getting back, the body fat I've gained will be gone, right? 3,500 calorie surplus above your maintenance calories. So for example, if you burn 2,500 calories a day, you would have to consume 6,000 calories a day to gain, or you'd have to consume 6,000 calories in a day to gain one pound of body fat. So if you go on holiday and you consume 6,000, you burn 2,500 calories and you, and you consume 6,000 calories, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you will gain half a stone of body fat. When you get back from holiday and jump on the scales, it might show an increase of 14 pounds on the scales. Seven pounds of that will be water retention, seven pounds will be body fat. Are you going to consume 3,500 calories every single day? But no, you're just not. You might be like, oh, my beer, Neil, that's a challenge I'm going to take on. But it doesn't work like that. It's actually hard to do. So I'm going on a week's all inclusive. For me to gain seven pounds of body fat for my calorie burn, I would have to eat 7,000 calories a day on average or 50,000 calories in a week. When I'm having a full day, bit of a drinking session with my mates, with food, with all this and all that, I do about 5,000 calories. So the most I will consume next week is 35,000 calories. So I might gain three and a half pounds of body fat. When I get back from Mexico and I get on the scales, I will be 10 pounds heavy. I'm weighing tomorrow, which is my last weigh before I go. I'll weigh Sunday morning, the day after we land. I guarantee I'll be 10 pounds heavier on the scales. Three, maybe four pounds of that will be body fat. Six pounds will be water retention. The water retention will be gone within a couple of days. The three to four pounds of body fat will be gone in two weeks after my holiday, right? And it's just like a little pause button. But I don't mind that little pause button because it means I fully enjoyed myself on holiday. Now, let's go back to 2017, the two weeks all inclusive where I gained 30 pounds. Was that mostly water retention? Absolutely not. When I look back at it, you know, I've got to ask myself, did I gain 14 to 20 pounds of body fat? Did I consume 3,500 calories a day more than I burned for that? Yeah. I, honestly, I, I was just crazy with my eating. At the time when I got back, when I got back from that holiday, it was very demoralising. It, it 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 hit me hard, if I'm being honest with you, to see that amount of weight gain. Don't get me wrong; I've always been very very positive, and when I looked at it, you know, I think I was about two hundred and twenty pounds down. Or no, I wasn't. I was about two hundred and thirty pounds down when I went on that holiday. So to then, you know, I'm still 200 pounds down. I'm still, you know, in a much better position than where I was. But it was quite scary to see. But actually, it did me a massive favour. It really, really did. And I'll tell you why. Ever since doing that all-inclusive holiday, every holiday I've been on since, it's reined me in a little bit. You know, last week, we, uh, not last week, last year, uh, we went to the States for two weeks. Our friends got married in Vegas and we ended up going to Vegas uh, for the wedding. But before that, we actually hired a car and went for a little drive around. We went over to San Diego and, and had a little mooch around over there. Um, and I went for two weeks. Um, now, I didn't weigh myself when I got back, which I'm really mad about. I was trying to do a little experiment because I wish I had. But even then, you know, 15, we were there for 15 nights, 15 nights in the States. I weighed myself about three weeks later and I was about 12 pounds heavier. So I reckon from what I'd done from getting back from holiday, I reckon I'd only lost about three or four pounds because I was just rubbish when I got back from holiday. Like I said to you guys, restart point. I, I restarted tracking my calories and everything, but I just wasn't great at it. I was just a bit inconsistent. I don't know why. I think there was just something going on in my head holding me back a little bit. A little bit maybe self-sabotage. I think what it was, we got back from the States and two and a half weeks after getting back from the States, we were going to Prague for a weekend for a friend's 30th. And I was just, I think in my mind, I was like, I'll restart after Prague. But you can't do that, 
right? Again, it's a learning curve. I learned from that from America uh, last year. And as soon as I get back from holiday now, I weigh myself for accountability and it, and it drives me back into my journey. I think the fact that I didn't weigh myself and I was like, ah, oh, I don't think I might. And I did. I, tr I truly convinced myself when I came back from America, I don't think I've gained any weight at all. Yeah, all right, Neil. Uh, but that two weeks all-inclusive in Mexico in May 2017, yeah, it, it it's reined me in on every holiday since because I never want to see that again because it did take some effort to get rid of it, you know? My general rule of thumb, there's absolutely no science behind this whatsoever, but from weighing myself once I've got back from holiday, which I did from 2015 onwards, apart from that one time uh, when I went to the States last year, um, and then weighing myself maybe a week later to see the difference, this is just my general rule of thumb. Like I say, there's no science behind this. This is just from my own experience. But whatever I weigh coming back from a trip... Um, the way it kind of works for me, and this has worked a lot for a lot of my clients, this kind of same sort of theory, is two-thirds, maybe 70% of your gain is water retention that will go extremely quickly. The rest is body fat, right? Now, like I say, there's no science behind that. It's just from my own experience, and it might not quite work for everybody. So, for example, if I go to Mexico all-inclusive uh, for a week, which I am doing, um, and I'm 10 pounds heavier when I come back, six to seven pounds, that's water retention, three to four pounds of that is body fat. The water retention will be gone in two or three days. The three to four pounds of body fat will be gone in two weeks. And that is kind of my general rule of thumb. So quick summary, how do you handle, or this is how I handle holidays and it's how I tell my clients to handle holidays. And yeah, I'll be honest with you, in my own honest opinion, it's how you should be handling holidays. We work hard and we work hard and we look forward to our holidays, vacations, as it were. Um, and whether we're losing weight or not, we shouldn't be doing things that's going to take away from that enjoyment. I'm not saying you need to go and get smashed on a holiday to enjoy it. I'm not saying you need to eat stupid amounts of food. But it is so important to have breaks from the nor from the normality of everyday life. And that's mainly what holidays are all about. You know, also on holiday, uh, actually, <laughs> I'm contradicting myself. I'm going to do a little smidge of work while I'm away next week. Uh, just checking emails and stuff like that. But, you know, one thing I won't be doing next week is I won't be writing up any weight loss plans. I won't be recording any podcasts. I won't be recording any weekly weight loss vlogs. Uh, I have said about it, but I won't be doing that. Um, you know, why? Because I just want a break from my everyday routine. Likewise, I won't be making my bed. I won't be cooking next week on holiday. Um, why? Because I do that on a day-to-day -day basis. I cook every day, make the bed, you know. So it's a break from routine. So on holiday, create a cutoff point, create a restart point. Don't go into holiday mode too early. Stick to your cutoff. When you get back, restart on your restart date and stick to it. If you weigh yourself when you get back from holiday, have in your mindset that 60 to 70, two thirds, 70%, 60, 70% of any weight gain is water retention. It's a natural thing in the body from being a little bit unhealthier, being a bit dehydrated for a week. It will be gone in two to three days if you get back to doing what you do, getting your water in, getting your healthier foods in. Uh, and two, uh, um, you know, uh, 30, 40 percent of that weight gain might be a little bit of body fat. It just is what it is. You know, if you go away twice a year and you enjoy Christmas and that means you gain 10 pounds of body fat, but you put the effort in over the year to lose 50 or 60 pounds of body fat, you're still going to be nearly four stone lighter at the end of the year. And you're still enjoying life. Because you have to enjoy life. I always say this. If you either choose to live life or lose weight, you'll kind of feel it, uh, you'll fail at both. Because if you're just going to live your life, you're going to be overweight, you're going to be unhappy, you're going to have lots of unhealthy relationships with food, you're going to feel guilty all the time. If you're just weight loss, I'm not going to have a takeaway, I'm not going to go on holiday, I'm not going to do this. You're going to start resenting your journey because, you know, weight loss is meant to enhance your life. And if you're not enjoying some of the things that you enjoy doing while losing weight. It's not enhancing your life. It's actually being detrimental to your life. So it's all about balance. You've got to, you know, 
build these things into your everyday life and you've got to build things into your weight loss journey and that includes holidays. So if you've got any holidays coming up for the rest of 2024, just enjoy them. Cut off point, restart point. Don't panic about any weight that you gain. The majority of it will be water retention. A smidge of it will be body fat. Get your head into the game. Lose that body fat within a couple of weeks of coming back. The water retention has gone in a couple of days and you'll have no guilt from your holidays. You'll just enjoy your holidays. Make great memories, relax, chill your beans um, and enjoy life because we're only here for one. There we go. Right, that is podcast 30 done and dusted. How to handle holidays. It's my own honest opinion. You handle them how you want to, but it's just the way I've done it from the start of my weight loss journey. It's the way I coach my clients to do it and it's the way I think you guys should do it as well so i'm off to go and drink some tequila and top my tan up i will try and get another podcast out shortly uh but until the next podcast or if you watch my weekly weight loss vlogs whatever you're doing make sure you're taking a bit of time out to enjoy a holiday still means you are bossing your weight loss <laughs>